Well, hello again and welcome back to my channel. Yes, the maker community have no doubt are busy scurrying away in their garages and workspaces, making gifts for friends and family, and maybe a couple of extra to sell at the likes of craft fairs, farmers markets, or the local independent retailer. And to be honest, I'm no different. I've been making uh, some cutting boards in small batches, which is what today's video is all about. Now, the idea of actually making things in small batches it's just a much more efficient way of doing things as opposed to just making one cutting board, say this one for example, and then going through the whole process and then making this one. It actually doesn't take that much longer to make things in say fours or fives than it does to make in ones or twos. The limitation really is what equipment you have to hand and that's not necessarily the big equipment like the planar thicknesses which I'll come to in a moment. For me it's clamps, it's parallel clamps, I only have a certain amount and it's enough for me to do roughly five in one batch, but that's fine for me and I can work okay with that. Um, you know, for others, they might have slightly more sets of clamps so they can do them in sort of sevens and eights. But anyway, uh, when you're starting out, you know, it's what equipment you've got to hand and then you build that up slowly. Now, just in terms of this type of project uh, can be quite a beginner friendly one really. Um, and it's edge grain boards that I've got here. Now, not teaching grandma to suck eggs, but just for the beginners who are starting out, the grain thing goes like this. If you've got a piece of timber like that, you've got the face grain on the top, you've got the edge grain, which is what these boards are, and you've got the end grain, which is what the fancy boards are that you see on the YouTube videos, okay? But it takes a little bit more technical ability to do them, because when you have more glue ups, you've got much more potential for things to go wrong. So for beginners, the best board to start with, I recommend, is the edge grain board. Now, people might say, well, why don't I just get face grain like that, glue them together, and then you've got a nice board and that would take, be a lot quicker. And to be honest, you've got a bit of a point. But the problem with, edge, uh, with gluing face grain boards on the side, so you're gluing these parts here, is in a relatively short space of time, the board will start to do that. It'll start to cup and then that's not the best of presents to be handing out. Whereas when you've got an edge grain board, which is great for knives and stuff as well, uh, and it's great you know, for longevity, uh, when you glue them together that way, they will last a lot longer than a face grain board will. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna take you through this now before I start in terms of the way I go about things because I am fortunate enough to have some of the nicer equipment like the planar thickness and I have a router table and stuff. So um, if you are just starting out, the timber you need to be looking for is what's called PAR timber or planed all round timber, which looks kind of like that. So that doesn't require any form of milling because basically all the four edges are square. So it's more case of just cutting and gluing together, gluing the edge grain together. If you get your timber and it looks a little bit more like that, then that requires more kind of uh, intermediate level of ability, shall we say, in terms of jointing, thicknessing, planing, thicknessing. Uh, depends what side of the pond uh, side of the pond you're on. So yeah, if you're just starting out, look for PAR timber. You pay more for it because it comes ready milled for you like that. But it is a lot easier for you to do. And to be honest, there is a bit of a discussion. I've seen this on a few YouTube channels before that maybe even more experienced makers buy PAR timber because it's time saved and time is money, as we all know. If you're doing this as a small business enterprise. Anyway, yeah, so let's get to how I got about making these. Hopefully you might pick up one or two pointers, you know, on how to do things. And then I will see you at the end.
And we're at the stage now, in terms of a beginner's project, if you got your glue up all nice and flat and didn't have to flatten it in a plane of thickness like I did, um, then you could just literally, these kind of corners, you could take them off with a bit of light sanding, um, get some feet on, you can get these off eBay or Amazon, they're not expensive, uh, little rubber feet, and I would recommend putting them on because you don't really want it lying flat, soaking in water, that kind of thing, not ideal. And then finish really, you need to soak them in mineral oil, get as much in as you can and then wipe off any excess. And you don't have to buy the fancy butcher's block oil stuff. I got uh, this off Amazon and it wasn't expensive. It was actually probably cheaper than buying a little one with a fancy branded name on it. Um, and then your own finish on that. So you can use, you know, hard wax oils, food safe, one, uh, food safe ones. I have my own that one of the very first videos I did uh, on the channel and I'll leave a link somewhere if you want to have a look at it and it's a mixture of um, it's the what I call the vegan friendly one really which is uh, canal wax and uh, mineral oil as opposed to beeswax uh, which I've also made that as well but the canal wax one's got a lovely finish to it uh, and there's your project done but I'm going to kind of elevate these a little bit um, just to kind of on the finishing on the corners and it'll give me the opportunity to use this Yes, that frighteningly magnificent router bit, uh, that trend, uh, very kindly gifted to me to, to try out on my router table. So I'm going to use that for, for the bottom end instead of using a track saw to create that bevel. And I'm just going to round over the top with my palm router, uh, a little bit of sanding and then a nice finish. Hopefully they should look quite smart. So enough chit chat and let's get on with it.
Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and as I referenced a couple of times in it, if you haven't got all the fancy tools and stuff yet and you're just starting out, you can make some real striking edge grain designs with minimal tools and equipment. I was, um, my friend uh, Abby from Abby Makes on Instagram referenced to me saying by using like thinner strips and stuff. So in this case, I've got the maple there and it creates a real dynamic effect on the board and I posted a picture of these four asking folk uh, on Instagram, this is a link in the description, um, which one did they think was best? And it was between these two. And I think it is to do with that, you know, that kind of like little thin strips of maple running through it with the purple in between and the walnut creating the majority of it. It creates a lovely looking board. And, you know, as I say, you don't have to have all the fancy gear. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've enjoyed this little walk through how I make things in small batches. As ever, everyone, take care, look after yourselves, and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.